Central Park, New York, the heart of the Big Apple, and also the home of urban gray squirrels. We're used to seeing these little fellas in our British towns and cities now, but this Native American has even managed to slot himself into this green oasis, where all around people are crammed in shoulder to shoulder. But if you think he's just restricted to the park, you'd be mistaken. Quite by chance, one grey squirrel was filmed discovering a way of unlocking the mechanism of a chocolate vending machine. Daylight robbery, American style. In the back streets of downtown Washington, D.C., Iris Rothman has an apartment and balcony on the fourth floor. Every day, she waits for her squirrels to visit her. The telephone cables and fire escapes are perfect highways for the squirrels. Up to 20 individuals come to visit her and she has a name for everyone. Birds also come to her 10 foot by 10 foot balcony. So important is it for wildlife, it's been officially declared an urban wildlife sanctuary. Close by is the most famous house in all America, the White House. Gray squirrels have successfully made their homes here too. While President Eisenhower hated them for digging up the lawn he used to practice his golf, President Reagan loved to feed them whenever he had the chance. So impressed was he with the squirrels that he commissioned a Christmas card showing the White House in snow with one tiny gray squirrel coming to visit. But the gray squirrel isn't always so welcome in American homes. Here in the United States, if you want to feed the birds, then you're going to have to feed the squirrels. And that means that squirrel-proof bird feeders like this one are really big business. More people here feed birds than go hunting, shooting, or fishing. And the industry which supplies them is one of the fastest growing in the country. Whole shops are devoted entirely to selling bird feeding equipment. There's already an enormous variety, but people are thinking up new ideas all the time. But most of them don't last long. Casualties in a war where we're easily the losers. Take, for example, this huge American metal bird feeder that we claimed was totally squirrel-proof when we tested it here in Britain in the last program. The squirrel simply cannot get at the nuts inside the box because the platform it has to stand on shuts off the only way to reach them. much to the annoyance of the squirrels. But even this ingenious and expensive feeder has now been cracked by the squirrels. Probably by chance, two help one another. One stands on the front platform as usual, but another counterbalances at the back, so this one can reach in to get a tasty walnut. Meanwhile, back at the new assault course, there's been a little progress. These rollers are proving difficult to hold on to.
In a back garden in London's sunny suburbia, a frustrated bird lover has come up with a more stunning way of preventing squirrels burgling his bird table. A mild electric shock frightens the squirrel. It's a sting, but quite harmless. Although shaken by the experience of the most sinister of devices yet, the squirrel doesn't give up. If birds can fly safely to the feeder, well, so too can the squirrel. Meanwhile, Howard Jackson puts the final touches to his latest design. Roy Harvey's decided to try a different tack. Discs that roll around an inner metal rod. So now he can replace his wire with what looks more like the latest satellite technology rather than a squirrel-proof feeder. Eventually, Roy Harvey hopes to market his design. But by far the simplest squirrel-proof bird feeder must be this one. It's a bird cage which allows small birds to come and go freely. But it prevents squirrels from reaching the peanuts. The designer of this particular one was intrigued by our original program. Now he too hopes to market it, both here and abroad. Is this the ultimate squirrel-proof design? How long will it be before this one's defeated?